if you guys can't yes or accept or whatever the FBI <laughs> wants you to do, I don't even know. It's a little welcome to Elevate Team Call Tuesday night. First, I want to just say congratulations for being here, for choosing tonight to pour into yourself, to pour into your business. This matters. Taking the time to hop on and care about developing yourself, developing your business, that matters. So first of all, congratulations for being here. It's a big deal. So give yourself a high five and be like, I'm awesome. It's cool. Amanda, that was awesome. She like legit high fived herself and then her son. I love it. Okay. So tonight I'm hopping on here. Um, we just got back from traveling. It's been super relaxing. I came back with clarity. I came back with fire. I came back excited, ready to really just run with it and reminded of how simple this is and how repetitive this is and how for certain personalities, the more repetitive it is, the more like, oh, I need to chase the shiny thing. I gotta try to oh, I need to do something different. No, it really helped that. Need to the second. There we go. The more repetitive it is, the more boring it feels. It feels too easy sometimes. And our brain's like, it has to be harder than this. So I'm just going to skip it today, or I'm just going to try and do something new. So I wanted to come on tonight and share with you ways to get out of your own way. Okay. I want to share with you just tips of those things that are going to come up. So you're aware of them. And then I'm going to wrap it up with how do I get business builders? Because I feel like that's always the thing that we're needing to refocus on and rethink about and retrain the way we think and really catch a hold of what we're saying to ourselves. So this sounds like a training that you're excited about. Go ahead and message someone on your team. I always, before power hour, before elevate, I'm messaging people saying, Hey, hop on here tonight. Make sure you're listening. And because so many times we don't think we need it. And those are the nights that we always do. So I'm going to get right into it. The number one way to get out of your own way. The number one way is to just do it. How many people here feel like you drag your feet, you avoid things. You're like, Oh, I don't know. I just can't do it. We think of all the reasons why we can't that we will not focus on the ways that we can. And so I love this question that actually, I think I learned it from Kristen Bosch. She said, when you're, when your brain is telling you, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to message that person. Well, I'll just sit around and think about it. Right. We start avoiding it and we don't actually do it. She says to tell yourself to ask the question, what do I know to do? So if you're my level one and you've messaged me, you absolutely 100% have gotten this message back for me is if you're like, what do I say to this? I'll say, what would you say to this? What would you say? I want to know what you would say. That's teaching our brain and starting to learn to trust our own selves that we have the answers. Doesn't mean you can't come and ask for guidance. Hey, does this sound right? Anything like that, but really just doing it, asking yourself, what do I know to do? What would I do? How would I take action? That is one of the biggest things. Just do it. The number two thing is remember your why. Why are you doing this? Why are you here on a Tuesday night giving up family time? Why are you showing up on your social media? Why are you messaging people? Why are you doing this? Drop in the comments why you're doing this. Why are you showing up? Why do you want what you want? Why do you want Emerald? Why do you want that paycheck? Ask yourself seven levels deep why you want this. Because I will tell you from personal experience that the only thing that's going to keep you motivated, it's not going to be your upline. It's not going to be power hour. It's not going to be one of us, Rodney or Phil or Megan or me motivating you to do it. It's not going to be Cheryl's product calls. It has to come from somewhere deep inside you that says, I'm 
doing this. I'm doing this no matter what, no matter how long it takes me, no matter what comes up, I'm doing this. So when people say to me, how did you build your business? I'm like, well, I built my business through a lot of life circumstances, right? I've graduated a senior. I've birthed a lot of babies. I've moved a lot. I've moved countries. I've worked my business through being widowed, through being orphaned, losing both of my parents and having to sell an auction off a farm with no life insurance. I don't know, I'm sure there is, but I'm not sure in America that there's much more life that can happen to somebody than all of that. But my why was purposed deep inside me. My why was I didn't want to live a mediocre life. And for me, that meant I wanted finances to give me options. I wasn't willing to go to a workplace and leave my kids. That was something that was important to me. What is your why? You have to have it so deep down there that you are unstoppable. On hard days, you're like, I know this is hard, but I'm showing up because Mary ain't showing up because Megan's showing up. Mary's showing up because Mary has a why. And you will hear people talk about this. Any successful person will tell you, get clear. You've got to be clear on where you're going and what you're doing. You've got to be. I knew from day one, I'm going for this, whether it was gold or senior gold or whether it was diamond, I'm going for this. I'm going all the way to the top. I know this is why I'm doing this. My why can evolve and change as I go, but I knew where I was going. Do you know where you're going? Do you know why you're going there? Get clear about that. Get excited about that. Number three, confront your negative self-talk. Come on to come on, talk to somebody. Confront your negative self-talk. I've been doing this amazing meditation thing in the morning with Rodney and he's with Bridge right now, if you're wondering where he is. But I, we, I've been doing this really great thing. And, and the question they ask immediately after you've breathed a couple of times She says, are you in fear frequency? Are you in love frequency? No other option. And I thought that was super interesting. The first time I heard that, I was like, that's weird. Like, why isn't there like, I don't know. Are you in abundance? Are you, (laughs) are you scared? I don't know any, but it wasn't, it was, are you in fear? Are you in love? Are you in fear? Are you in love? Right. And when we're in fear, we have all these thoughts of what someone's going to think of us or what are they assuming about us or what are they thinking about me, you know, restarting my business or what are they thinking about me when I make that post or we're so focused on all the things that could go wrong. We're in fear frequency, which that means is you're fighting resistance on top of an already hard thing that you're doing. So now you're battling your own self over and over and over again. So before you work your business, I want you to ask yourself, am I working in fear or am I working in love? And it's going to be really easy for you to tell because you're going to be like, wow, I will tell you, I've been working on my mindset for at least five solid years. I've been Plexus for eight years, probably more So probably more along the seven-year mark, I've been working on mindset, but really gotten into in five years, I've been doing this meditation every single morning I've identified fear frequency. Every single morning I've been like, wow, I'm in fear. What the heck? I think I'm a positive person. How is this happening? But we meditate constantly on the things that could go wrong and on the ways that might not work out. Oh, I guess I better message two people. I guess I better, you know, do this and hope that person doesn't hate me in in the morning. I hope that person doesn't, doesn't not respond to me. I hope my Facebook post is okay, right? It doesn't matter. It's whatever the fear frequency is. The last two mornings I've woken up like, oh my goodness, what if I have this baby during convention? That'd be so horrible. Like I don't want to have, and like meditating on the things that could go wrong instead of knowing that everything always works out. 
<clears throat> and also knowing that I always go late, like it's going to be okay. So I want you to ask yourself before you start to work, am I operating out of fear or am I operating out of love? Fear will make you want to check everything. Fear will want you to double check with your upline. Is this right? What would you say to this? Can I get coaching? Can I get this? That's what the fear base love base is going to be. I'm so excited. Yes, Julie, you could. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But a love base is like, I've got all the people I need. The people are coming to me. I'm so excited for these people to be on my team. Who can I approach now? Who can I be talking to now? I'm so excited to get on the call tonight. I don't feel annoyed. I don't feel frustrated. I don't feel lack. I feel excitement. I loved talking to Cheryl. Um, she had eye surgery and she could be complaining to me, but she literally messaged me and she's like, I'm so excited. She has this new girl who's really excited to be working. And she's like, I'm just so excited. This is really, we're having a blast. I'm like, that is how we want to operate from, right? Love and excitement. Another way to get out of your own way, nothing compares to you. And reminding yourself, that you are unique, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that nobody else is like you or should be like you. So when you find yourself in a predicament, maybe you don't like what rank you're at. Maybe you don't like, um, you know, you're looking around and you're telling yourself all these reasons. You're too old. You're too young. You've got too many kids. You don't have kids. Whatever it is, you don't relate or you find yourself in a stuck position, I want you to go watch a diamond documentary of somebody who reminds you of you. Okay, Michelle Stuchel did a post the other day. She's a Sapphire on Brittany Howard's team. She put down that she was 52 years old and I just about fell out of my chair. I was like, there's no way that she's 52 years old. She just, I was literally shocked. And I'm like, that's amazing. Cheryl is 60 years old. There are people all across plexus of different ages. Zachary Slavic Slavins, Joanna, his mom's name. She's diamond. Always reminds me of fried green tomatoes. Tawanda. Anyway, um, he's Sapphire. And what was I just going to say about him? Oh, he's like 19. Okay. No kids. He actually put a post up that said, if you're waiting for me to have kids, you're going to be waiting a long time. He's like, I just babysat my three siblings, my three younger siblings. And it makes me want to get a vasectomy. That's why he posted this. So I'm just sharing that. So I'm just saying they have like 11 kids in their family or something. But my point is you will find what you want to find. So when you feel discouraged, when you feel like I can't do it, I don't look like so-and-so. I don't act like so-and-so. I'm not this, I'm not that. Find somebody who is and get inspired. Inspire yourself. So nothing compares to you except for you. Compare yourself to you. Run with the right crowd, okay? Get with the right people. If you're hanging around someone who's like, yeah, I didn't do my stuff. And they're like, yeah, me either. <laughs> Let's, who cares? I don't want you hanging out with those people. I also don't want you hanging out with anyone who laughs like I just laughed. The next thing I don't want you doing <laughs> is hanging out with people that don't call you higher. They don't challenge the thoughts that you're having. They don't really come to you and be like, hey, like there is a better way here. You don't have to think like this, right? So watch who you're, who you're allowing speak into your life. And the last one I put down was don't give yourself a pass. I put a mountain movers earlier in the day. It said, if it's important, you'll find a way. And if it isn't, you'll find an excuse. And I got that off of a post Megan Milakovic made in 2018, I think, as a brand new, probably emeralds, maybe, maybe she's emerald. And I thought that is so crazy because that is how I've watched a lot of you, Megan included, run her business this way. And the truth of it is this, if you want a foundationally strong business 
And I'm guessing because you're on here that you do. If you want a diamond income, if you want an emerald income, if you want true change, you can no longer give yourself passes. And this kind of ties me into my next part about meeting business builders, because in the book, Build to Last, which I don't even say the word recommend, I'm like, it should just be an automatic, absolute read for every person who wants to become a student of Plexus, who wants to become a master of their business. I am a massive believer in this book. I cannot even handle it, but he talks about this, this story. And in it, it, it kind of goes along with this whole idea of stop giving yourself a pass. Stop telling yourself, oh, it's because, oh, you're pregnant. Oh, you're moving. Oh, this is going on for you. Oh, this is going on for you. There will always be something going on for you. And he talks about a burning house. And I'm going to really summarize it. And I hope I don't butcher it, but I, it really has impacted me because I have felt this to my core in this business. And he talks about the urgency in which you show up for your business. And he says, you know, you're driving home from work, you see fire trucks ahead of you, and they are turning down your road. And all of a sudden it's in front of your house and your house is on fire. And you hop out of your car, you're like, oh no, my house is on fire. And you want to, you want to go in and get some things, but the police officers and the firemen are like, no, 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 you can't come in. And you just stand there and watch your house burn down. He said this, the next person, and this is the analogy of the successful person versus the unsuccessful person is that person, same thing. Oh no, my house is on fire. And goes to go inside and the police officer's like, no, sir, you can't go in. And he just runs through it because his family's inside. It's unstoppable. He's running in there because his why is way bigger than any resistance, even though it's good resistance. Any resistance standing in front of it, it's like, I'm not holding back. I'm running in because my family's in there. And I know for me, when I built my business, that is how I felt 80% of the time was my family's in that building. My family's future is in this house. My family opportunities and, and being able to get the life we want is on the other side of this building. So I don't get to decide to just give myself a pass because there's way more riding on this than just two to three people. I want you to picture if I had said no to Jen, we have over 30,000 people who have had said yes somewhere along this journey in Plexus. I want you to think about if your upline Cheryl, if Lisa, anybody had said no, how that would change your life. So often we're thinking about us. We become selfish. Well, I don't want a message. I don't want to bother people. I don't want to do this. I'm, a, I'm afraid. I don't want to do this. When in truth, it's just very selfish because if you're really thinking about the other people, if Jennifer had been a, well, the house is on fire. Oh, well, I'll just stand outside and hadn't had urgency to reaching out to me and messaging me. I would not be here. I would be in a totally different circumstance. And so when you think about your boldness being attached to somebody else's blessing, all of a sudden that kind of amps it up a little bit. When you start thinking about, instead of thinking, oh, well, like my kids are fine. Everyone's good. Like we're fine. We're, I'm fine. Right. Like Ross off friends. I'm fine. I'm fine. I promise everything's fine. But you know that the extra money would be a game changer, but you know that your kids watching their mom become an absolute boss, become confident, become a diamond in plexus and walk that stage that that changes legacy families that that builds legacy wealth, that that changes things for your family. 
And I want you to really think about that. How many times have you given yourself a pass? Because I don't know, maybe it just, it felt good. It felt like the easy thing to do. On the other side of fear is greatness. It was a motto I lived by. If I'm afraid of it, if it makes me feel uncomfortable, I'm doing it. And I'm not just doing it tomorrow. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. If it makes you uncomfortable to message all of your level ones tonight, to actually just not go to bed or turn on Netflix until you've messaged every single level one and been like, oh my gosh, how are you loving your products? Tell me everything. Or I see you haven't ordered in over six months. I would love to offer you an opportunity to re-sign up because the sales are incredible and I would hate for you to miss out on it. Let's talk. In this book, he says, the difference is when you think about what you want. So if you want emerald or diamond or sapphire, what are all the reasons you say that you won't, you won't do? What are all the things you say? I won't do. I won't post. I won't be consistent. I won't message. I won't put people in three-way chats. I won't duplicate. What are you saying? I won't. And he said, the more I won't you get out of the way, the faster it happens. So you may be hearing, I'm not going to message my level ones tonight. And I'm saying, do you want this business? Do you want it to work? It's just doing it. It's month end. There's a special going on. You've never had more reason to message people than to not. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? So I want you guys to be thinking about those things kind of as we go into this is where's my mindset? Where's my frequency? Am I in fear? Am I in love? Am I in excitement and passion? Or am I feeling frustrated? What time is it here before I start going? I've got seven minutes. Okay, here goes nothing. Business builders. Okay, really quickly. I want you to be brave over the next 40 hours tomorrow, it's 24 hours. I want you to specifically ask people if they're interested in building a business with you. Ask them. Don't assume anybody is like, I don't, when we use words like silver or do a post, they don't know what we're saying. I want you to actually ask people, Hey, do you want to run a business with me? Like, let's do this. You would love this. You'd be so fun. It would be incredible. You should be doing this with me. When somebody says, what is your biggest tip for success? I'm just doing this in a three-way chat with Cheryl now. I said, my biggest number one tip for you is get a running partner, is to get a running partner. How many of you on here have a running partner? Raise your hand. Okay, Lisa, would you put in the comments who yours is? Just write their name down. Okay, if you don't have a running partner, no big deal, but you need to get one. You need to find a level one who is running with you. And how do you find them? Alita, how do I find them? Well, I called mine. I asked mine. I said mine. I drove to my friend's house. I found them. Because if you don't have people building a business underneath you, it's going to take you longer. That is just the simple facts, right? So asking people to build a business with you. And if you know that statistically, you're going to get a lot of no's, you're going to have to really watch your mindset. It's okay. This really isn't meant for everybody, but anybody can do it. So asking. The second thing is you have to believe that you can do it. I wrote down this little scribbling note. It says, everything is going to be created twice, once in your mind and once in reality. And what I mean by that is you have to believe you can do it for you to do it. 
That's why everyone's always talking about visualization. It's like visualize a builder saying yes to you. Visualize somebody coming alongside you and being like, yes, let's go do this. It should make you feel excited. It should make you feel good. And then when you go out there and you start asking people, it won't feel so bad. And you're going to actually find the right person to fit this. Whatever you are feeling and thinking is going to happen. So you need to really get a hold of that and be like, I'm in control of this. This is happening for me. So for me, I wrote down, like, I listen to diamond documentaries constantly. I needed to prove to myself that this was true. Starve the fear and feed your belief. Starve the fear and fear feed your belief. I wrote down, which is similar, evaluate the five people that you're spending your most time with, being bold about the opportunity. Tell people that you see potential in them. I'm just reading my notes here. And then the last thing is on that note is to make sure you're following up with those people. If they say yes, if they're excited, Follow up with them, give them the next best step. And if you're wondering what's my next best step, go to the level up library on Facebook that we have. And there's a great training by Kate on how to develop silvers and how, what is the next best step? We have everything you could ever need. So the only thing missing is you, it's you. You have to be bold. You have to get out there and ask people to work this business with you. Let's do this together. Jennifer asked me 18 times. Megan was signed up for five months before she finally decided to do this business. Who is on your team that you could message tonight and be like, friend, you're sitting on a gold mine. I know you have three friends that would love to try this. There's a huge sale and you'd make $300 in a day. Are you sending those messages? Are you thinking about those things? So if you choose to stay up tonight and not watch Netflix and you decide to message people, will you message me and let me know that you did that? Because I want to personally cheer you on and say, I see you. And to tell you that that is a huge move in the right direction for your amazing business that is going to change your life. So any questions before we hop off? Everybody feels good? I just wanted to say thank you. This was amazing tonight. Thank you. You're so welcome. You are so welcome. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for just where this team is going, where we're headed and bring in new people we're bringing in. So be blessed. Have an amazing week. And we'll see you next week.